Hey gang, Will here from the Ashland Fly Shop. We are back with the regionally famous Ashland Fly Shop fishing report for the 2nd of June, the very beginning of June. We're talking about trout in... Here we go. right in with the Rogue River salmon fly hatch. Again, we kind of look at it in two pieces, uh, the hatchery down to like Shady Cove where we run most of our guide trips, all of our guide trips, uh, out of drift boats there on that stretch. Uh, that's even kind of two stretches. That's kind of hatchery to Rogue Elk Park, Rogue Elk Park down to Shady Cove, sometimes a little bit below there. And then we'll talk a little bit about the holy water after that. So pretty topsy-turvy. Uh, uh, so far, we're about a little more than a week into it. Uh, started off with a real bang, some great fishing. Um, flows were about 2,500 or 2,200 to start. Um, and uh, yeah, I had some really great fishing right out of the gate. You know, those first days are always a really good one if you can get out there. And then we saw a real increase in flows, which really played havoc with the fishing. We also had cool weather, but even the overcast was okay with the bugs and the little cooler weather. But once they raised the flows and the cooler weather, it really kind of put it down. So, um, you know, but, you know, so certainly we had some, um, some frustrated folks fishing out there, which is too bad. We hate to see that. But, uh, but I do think that that's going to extend the hatch out a little bit. You know, last year by the 1st of June, we were almost calling it quits there, um, but there's still a lot of bugs up there, and I don't think that we've even seen the best of the fishing up there on the upper section of the Rogue. Um, most of the fishing we've heard that's been pretty outstanding has been from um, Rogue Elk Park down to Shady Cove with that upper stretch you know kind of being slow to get going but i think that's going to really turn on and be be great there's still a tons of bugs up there um, and so um, those bugs just need to get on the water the flows are going to be dropping a bit uh, about 100 cfs every day a couple days they're going to bring it down maybe 600 cfs in the next week so all that bodes really well for uh, the fishing to continue and to be pretty pretty good up there uh, for the next week. So even today could be a big shift. I haven't heard from anyone yet today, but it could be really good up there. This hot weather, it doesn't hurt uh, anything at all. The bugs really get going in it. So I'm, I'm very optimistic, of course, uh, about the fishing still to come up there. So um, so yeah, we hope, hope it's good. Hope you get out there and give it a try. Again, if you have a boat, that's the best way to go. But, um, but stay tuned into that, um, you know, that upper rogue stretch for another week or 10 days, and we'll, we'll keep you tuned in on that. Okay, now to the holy water. Same kind of situation. Well, not same, but uh, similar. So really fits and starts, uh, cooler weather, uh, bigger flows. You know, we've got the plume coming out there on the... Um, you know, on the far side up at the dam there where they kind of do the overflow. Now, I like that. I think that's good. It creates chop on the water. Um, you know, I think that really helps in the long run because those fish can get pretty spooky and the more flat water you're fishing, uh, those fish can really look at those bugs and decide that they probably don't want to eat that thing that's uh, not made out of natural materials. So, uh, um, so I, I think that is helpful. Um, you know, the flows will start coming down a little bit. I know there's still a lot of water to fish up there. Um, haven't really seen the bugs on the water. Probably just in the last few days, we've kind of started to see them, you know, get on the water a little bit. And still the fish aren't cr quite reacting the way that, um, you know, we want to see them react. So, but there are tons of bugs up there. I've seen some great photos and videos, just tons and tons of bugs uh, up there crawling all over the place. So it's always something to see. 
you know, you're gonna fool a fish here or there, um, but you know, just don't expect that kind of lights out fishing. I think that's obviously still to come. So I would give it another 10 days easily, 14 days up there. It looks like we're going into even maybe mid-June with this, which would be great. A lot of times um, we're in pretty far into it at this point, but, uh, but that's kind of right on track for the holy water. So, um, so stay tuned into it up there. Again, as we've talked about in our previous po uh, videos and our uh, outlooks and all that, you, know, you want to take different flies, you want to rotate flies, um, you got to show those fish some different stuff and um, yeah, just be ready for that strike. Again, don't use 5X, you know, use 3X, 2X, you know, make sure you've got some pretty good size leader and stuff up there to, to uh, fish those fish because there are some bruisers in there. We've already seen a couple like really, really big fish up there this year. So they're in there. They will come up. I do believe, you know, we're going to see some great fishing up, up there before it's all done. So. Be optimistic, get up there, check it out. I'll see you up there. All right, so let's do a little NorCal roundup. This is the peak time, as I say, uh, all year approaching this time. This is the peak time to fish Northern California. We are in the dead center of it right now. There's some very good fishing happening. We have some very hot weather you know, which hopefully will get back into a cooling trend. It'll stretch things out. But the more hot weather we have, the more that, that, that good fishing time, you know, comes to a screeching halt. So now is the time to be out there fishing. Um, I've had some great reports from the Pitt River. We don't talk about it too much, uh, but it sounds like it's really fishing well this year. That's over by, um, over by Hat Creek and Bernie Reservoir in that area. Um, and that or Bernie State Park and that can be that can be very good fishing a lot of good Euro style nymphing happening over there some decent little hatches but it's mostly a nymphing game so high stick Euro style nymphing is going to be really good there uh, a little further around we talk about the McLeod that looks like that's been very good as well off to a really good start this is when you see the most hatches happening um, my experience with stoneflies and salmon flies on the McLeod would be uh, probably the lower end is seeing some of them now and they'll work their way up and I typically think of the salmon flies at about the third week of June, golden stone salmon flies third week of June uh, there on the McLeod. So mid-June I'd be really looking for them and that can be a wonderful place to, uh, to fish salmon flies as well. So hopefully you'll get into a little bit of that um, there and if that's not happening might find some PMDs and, and uh, probably, you know, just some standard nymphing and stuff will going to work really well for you there. Dry dropper can work really well too. Um, all the usual suspects, you know, pheasant tails, uh, micro mayflies, things like that. All those are good. Um, moving around to the upper sack, now I would say would be really the peak. Um, and it could drop off pretty fast in June if this weather stays warm. So now's the time to get to, uh, to, get to the upper sack. Um, the whole river should really be in play. I love fishing down from Dunsmere and you know, down below there, and that river gets pretty warm as we get into like July. But I'd expect to fish into the first part of July, and then I slowly kind of work my way up the river as the summer goes on. I've had really good golden stone fishing in the Cantera Loop area in the first part of July. So, um, so that can be good as well. So um, you kind of want to keep that in mind with these rivers, these freestone rivers kind of working your way up as the summer goes on. But Upper Sack can be a very good bet. Wonderful wet wading to do there when it's really hot, you know, just wet wading and then just take a quick dip. You know, it's a really wonderful place to go and swim and uh, recreate on the Upper Sacramento. So that's a, one of our favorite places. And that's what we're looking at for NorCal. Um, definitely some, some really, gr really great stuff to do down there right now. Uh, we'll talk about Stillwater a little bit. Um, you know, the mid-elevation lakes are really going to be uh, kind of transitioning into bass right now, um, which is great. That can be a tremendous amount of fun. Um, but that is going to be a really peak time, like high at Howard Prairie, even though they're super low. Probably have some pretty good fishing out there. Um, the main places that we look at for Stillwater, uh, Diamond Lake, um, Klamath Lake, haven't really heard much from Diamond Lake. Actually, I had re one really good report from a, a guy that spends a lot of time up there this time of year. 
um, and had some pretty good fishing, but haven't really heard much other than that. Um, but it should be a really good time to be up there. Uh, you know, fishing, fish should be pretty dispersed still. I'm sure it's not that warm in the lake, so the fish should be pretty dispersed, but can be a little bit of a challenge to find them. But, uh, but they're around. And that Rocky Point area, you know, we hear a lot of fishing out there. It's kind of the closest place for us. So um, that would be a really good bet. And I would definitely try intermediate lines and, you know, small lake flies. We should start seeing, you know, damsels and things like that get going pretty quick here. So um, I'd keep an eye on that. But just your standard woolly buggers, even some larger minnow type patterns could be good. And then coronamids under an indicator, you know, if you've got a pretty good spot that you know uh, that can work really well there, so that's worth a try. Um, Diamond Lake um, seems like it's a little bit slow to start. Uh, Marcus was up there this last weekend, and he ultimately did find some feeding fish and <clears throat> had some pretty good fishing. He saw some saw some pretty interesting stuff uh, on the lake as well, as far as feeding fish and those tiger trout. I think are going to have a really interesting impact on that lake and uh, could be just an outstanding fish to pursue um, in some different ways uh, coming up. So we're keeping an eye on that up there at Diamond and we'll kind of keep you tuned in the more we hear about that. But, you know, standard fishing, you know, that south side of the lake is real popular with fly anglers and that's a good place to be um, this time of year. Fishing the river, uh, you know, the riverbeds and stuff like that in the lake, that can be good. Um, and that, that should be pretty excellent in the, in the next several weeks. So if you like to fish up at Diamond, um, it should be really a good time to be up there fishing. That's what we're looking at. That's what we know. That's the roundup. That's what we're doing. And that's what you should consider doing because we're the pros. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. We're always happy to help. Feel free to follow up with us. Um, and uh, we'll give you the most up-to-date information that we have and have a blast out there. It's beautiful. Let's get out and fish.